How do you feel about the show here? I'm, I, I feel great about it. Um, you know, this work that is in kind of its second re-evolution, um, it, it really has gone somewhere exciting. And, you know, as you can see by sort of the variety with, within these paintings, um, and that has to do with sort of the technical side of tweaking this or that, but uh, I, I feel really good about the show. Do you feel that in the five years I've known you, since 2016, you feel your work has moved or changed a lot, evolved a lot? So I would say yes, and I would say largely because I live by a simple mantra innovate or die. And it, it's the idea that unless I continue to push and reinvent myself and raise the bar of what's visually possible, that it gets boring. And, you know, in, inherent within that is a whole lot of failure along the way, a lot of trial and error, but I don't care. I only care about when a painting sings, when right. this becomes a symphony and it's a <gasps> How long does it take you to do a painting of this size, roughly? So there's two answers. The first answer is this took 59 years because I'm 59 years old. And it took all of my life experience until I stepped into the batter's box to make this painting. So that's I'm one answer. The, the second answer, the more um, direct answer is once all the preparation was done and it was time to for the rubber to meet the road, it was time for paint to meet the screen, from when the first paint starts to get moved until the last paint, until the flat bar spreader comes off on the final pass, mm. it's give or take around 20 minutes. What do you apply the paint with? So with a, I call it a flat bar spreader and specifically because it's a piece of aluminum, a quarter of an inch by six inches by yep. the entire width of the painting connected to a long wood handle. So it's a flat bar and it's gonna spread paint. And I use that to move paint across the surface of the screen. Now these are painted horizontally? These are painted flat on the ground. So the screen it's on some wood blocks and on a, a device that's stretching the screen yeah, yeah. called a box beam frame. So the whole thing might be is uh, six inches above the ground. Do you find or feel that gravity is a factor? So it's, it's both a, a physical factor in the, in the creation of the work in the sense that, you know, the gravity here on Earth is one, one G and as the flat bar spreader is moving across the painting in the final pass, which in the case of this painting is putting the yellow over the pink and, and the black. Right. So what's happening between the flat bar spreader and the painting itself is that this yellow is beginning to, for, in this case, it started from the top. Yep, got it. And it is, that yellow becomes connected, sort of stuck to the underside of the flat bar spreader, and it is dripping. It is literally beginning to fall and drip, and as little drips get caught by the screen, they're caught and dragged. Do you see your paintings as having, well, the word I came up with was vibrato. Mm -hmm. uh, not just because we're in Italy, but that helps. But also because, despite being profoundly deaf, I listen to a lot of music. Mm -hmm. And the analogy between painting and sound is it's a sure. very, very... It's wavelengths. Set in concrete one from the beginnings of abstraction, the music of painting, you know. Yeah. Eyes... I can hear these paintings. Oh, amen, that's beautiful. To me, these paintings have a kind of voice. 
And voices have vibrato, you know, they have a resonance, that's the word. And, and it's, that's an interesting point, David, because I often feel that when the work really succeeds, that it's a symphony, that it is all of these parts coming together and it is this crescendo of, you know, all of the things that go in to make a symphony. It's like... Color's got its own life, obviously. Does color mean a lot to you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, color, color is joy. Color can make something unbelievable. Color can also kill something. But color, magnificent color, it's because of what something is next to. So just take the most beautiful color that you happen to love, whatever that color is. If you paint an entire room, that whole color, that room is suddenly boring. But if you take that color and you set it off next to a complementary color, for instance, that color goes, it's, it's alive. When you start, and I haven't actually come to think of it, I haven't actually seen the screens themselves that much. I mean, you know, with the Baku right. paintings, I saw the back, mm -hmm. and I saw the back and mm -hmm. the installation on Tuesday, Wednesday. But um, something's crossed my mind. If these earlier works were painted, so to speak, from the inside out, mm -hmm. the success of works of 2021, mainly, they're painted from the outside in. Correct. It's very fascinating. Yeah. This is why the spatiality is extremely hard to describe and you have to see them. I and mean, it's an optical experience. It's not off art. It's not a right. tricksy thing. But you really do have to see them and look, look quite closely. And that's what I find, I find it very seductive. Well, thank you.